Let's say that the Swiss National Bank decided that 70 cents was the lowest exchange rate it desired for the Swiss franc. So I'm going to put a horizontal line here at 70 cents and I'll call this line the price floor. Now what if there was a decrease in demand for francs causing the equilibrium exchange rate to fall below 70 cents? We can show that by shifting the demand curve to the left so that it intersects the S1 curve below 70 cents. If, for example, the equilibrium exchange rate fell to 60 cents, the Swiss National Bank would now have to intervene in the market for Swiss francs by buying its own currency and selling its reserves of other currencies, including the euro in this case, to revalue the franc until it was back at the 70 cent price floor established by the National Bank. So this new red line represents what would happen if the Swiss National Bank were to intervene, the CB buys Swiss francs to maintain the minimum price floor of 70 cents. The graph's getting a little bit cluttered here. I'm going to clean it up and we'll go back to the original scenario in which the price ceiling of 83 cents was established. Okay, so here we see the price ceiling of 83 cents again. We've talked about how a central bank can use monetary policy and its reserves of foreign currencies, otherwise known as official reserves, in order to try to maintain a maximum or a minimum exchange rate in the foreign exchange market. There is one more tool that government can actually use to try to maintain the value of its currency against another currency within a certain range. The third tool at government's disposal for maintaining the value of its currency in the foreign exchange market is exchange controls. This is legal limits on foreign investment at home or abroad by foreign and domestic investors. By limiting the amount of foreign investment in the country allowed by foreign investors, a government can essentially minimize the amount of demand for its currency on the forex market. An example of this is how the Chinese government for decades has now limited foreign investment in China in order to help keep the value of the Chinese currency weak against the US dollar. Keeping its currency weak has given China an export advantage in global trade. By limiting investment in China, upward pressure on the value of the Chinese Yuan has been somewhat minimized. On the other hand, if government wanted to keep its currency strong, it might limit the amount of investment done by domestic investors abroad. Large amounts of domestic investment abroad would increase demand for foreign currencies and reduce demand for the domestic currency and increase the supply of the domestic currency in forex markets, causing it to get weaker. If a weak currency is deemed undesirable by the government, then the government can set limits on the amount of foreign investment abroad done by domestic investors. So there are three tools for managing an exchange rate. Central banks can use monetary policy. By lowering interest rates, they can reduce demand for their currency on forex markets, since investments within that economy become less attractive, and help keep the currency below a price ceiling. By raising interest rates, they could make investment in that country more attractive, causing demand for the currency to rise and keep the exchange rate above a price floor. Official reserves refers to the central bank's reserves of foreign currencies. If a central bank wishes to devalue its currency in the forex market, it can buy foreign currencies, add them to its official reserves, and increase the supply of its currency on the forex market, as Switzerland did starting in 2011, causing an increase in the supply of the currency and a devaluation against the euro. If the central bank wished to revalue its currency or strengthen it against another currency, it could increase the supply of foreign currencies and buy its own currency on the forex market, driving up demand and keeping the exchange rate above a minimum level established by the central bank. Finally, government can implement exchange controls, which limits the amount of foreign investment at home or investment abroad by domestic firms. Limiting the amount of investment flowing into or out of a country can help keep the demand for the country's currency on the forex market within a certain range and maintain the exchange rate within a desired range. Now to conclude here, we can distinguish between a managed and a pegged exchange rate system. A pegged exchange rate is essentially just an extreme version of a managed exchange rate system. In order to peg a currency against another, a government and central bank must set extremely strict limits on foreign exchange and must actively use its official reserves and monetary policy to maintain a constant exchange rate against that of another country. Pegs are less frequent than managed exchange rate systems. There are only a handful of countries that have pegged exchange rates, and in some cases those countries choose just to adopt the currency of a foreign country rather than try to maintain a peg with it. 
We didn't get to our advantages and disadvantages of a managed exchange rate system, but essentially I'll summarize these by reminding you what the advantages and disadvantages of a floating exchange rate system were. For instance, one of the main advantages of a managed exchange rate system is stability and certainty, which makes investment in the country more attractive. A less developed country that's hoping to attract foreign investment in infrastructure or technology or capital or manufacturing might benefit from a managed exchange rate system in which there is less uncertainty among international investors, making the country more attractive to foreign firms who might want to build factories there or do business with the developing country. A disadvantage, on the other hand, is the need to accumulate and use foreign exchange reserves to manage the value of your currency on the forex market. Switzerland, for example, when it chose to manage its exchange rate against the euro, had to print hundreds of millions of Swiss francs and use these to buy euros. When a central bank makes the decision to manage its exchange rate against another country's currency, it requires the central bank to either print large quantities of its own currency and supply those on the forex market, or to use its official reserves to buy its own currency on the forex market. In either case, this can lead to either forced savings for the nation's households, as a central bank must accumulate reserves of foreign currencies in order to manage its own, or in the long run it could lead to inflation if the supply of its own currency is increasing on the forex market, causing it to get weak over time and leading to higher prices domestically. A second disadvantage of a managed exchange rate system is the loss of the use of monetary policy for domestic demand management. This was one of the advantages of the floating exchange rate system explained in my last video. When a country chooses to let its exchange rate be determined by the free market, it is then able to use monetary policy primarily to maintain domestic macroeconomic objectives. If the policy, however, is to manage the value of the exchange rate on the forex market, the monetary policy, which is the central bank's manipulation of interest rates, changes focus from managing domestic aggregate demand to managing the value of the currency. This essentially takes one of the important tools out of the toolkit of macroeconomic policymakers for promoting the objectives of full employment, economic growth, and price level stability. So in this lesson, we have distinguished between a managed exchange rate system and a floating exchange rate system. And we've used an example to show how, by the use of monetary policy and the accumulation or the sale of official foreign exchange reserves, a central bank can maintain the value of its currency below a certain price ceiling or above a certain price floor. Exchange controls require the government to set limits on how much foreign investment is done within or without the country. Here we go.